warning fellow students, teachers, staff, and to our parents who are also watching. I'm sure you're all familiar with the phrase, Christ is enough. This simply means that we don't need anything else in this world other than Jesus. Jesus is our ultimate reward. He is the best in our lives and not the money nor popularity. Giving himself to us is the best reward that we can receive. Nothing can compare and be better than this. Though we can't be perfect and are always prone to sin, the Lord Jesus Christ made us righteous in the eyes of the Father. Even though we are not perfect, the love of Christ is perfected in us. He can guide us to walk in the path of righteousness. To open us in prayer, let us hear from Jerry Gideawan. Let us come to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this wonderful day. As we open this chapel time, we praise you for giving us the opportunity to hear and learn from your word. As we celebrate your sacrifice on the cross for our sins, may you help us remember that you alone can save us by grace through faith. Help us to become truthful and faithful in our love to you, to our families, and to our neighbors. May you increase our faith and boldness to proclaim the truth of Jesus to the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 2 Corinthians 4.17 For this light momentary affliction is preparing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison. He is our reward and nothing could ever satisfy. Our joy and our salvation are all in all and through every storm we shall rejoice in Him. And from now on and forevermore, Christ is enough for us. Let us all put ourselves in the presence of the Lord as we sing the song, Christ is Enough.
Our deepest human need is salvation from sin and death, and Jesus answered it powerfully. Once we have Christ, we do not require anything else, in this life or the next. No extra conditions should be added to His salvation by grace. No achievements, human philosophies, other rituals, or religions. He alone fulfills us, and His glory sets Him apart as Savior. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen His glory. Glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. John chapter 1, verse 14. Our identity and worth revolve around the love He poured out at the cross and empty tomb, as told by the Scriptures. As said in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 3-4, for what I received, I passed on to you as of first importance, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures. We do not search for more answers, because the Lord's redemption is the ultimate spiritual treasure. When thinking of the word sufficient, there is a double edge to it when it comes to God. He is self-sufficient, in that he requires no outside help to exist and function as he is. Since Christ is divinely self-sufficient, he also has the ability to be the sufficient solution. Jesus was specifically ordained within the Trinity to be the Savior of mankind. Even more, he shares all the inherent power from his divine nature to us, though we don't deserve it. What mercy! What a blessing beyond compare! All glory goes to him. What a mighty Lord we serve! Christ is glorious, and we fulfill our calling when we worship him in totality. Rejoice and rest over this truth. Psalm chapter 28 verse 7 says, The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusts in Him and He helps me. My heart leaps for joy and with my song I praise Him. The Lord is boundless and infinite. Jesus is our strength. He has taken our sins, brought victory, and He is to come again. Let us all prepare our hearts and meditate on this song, which also pictures the Lord as our strength, our shield, our helper, and our all in all. You are my strength when I am weak. You are the treasure that I see. You are my all in all Seeking you as a precious jewel Lord, to give up, I'd be a fool You are my all in all
So what else does the Bible say on Christ being enough? Firstly, He saves. It says in Acts 4.12, And there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. Remember, Jesus claimed to be the way, the truth, and the life. He is the only means by which we can be reconciled with our Creator. So Jesus Christ is enough for us to be saved and to be brought back into God's family. Next, He perfects. It says in Hebrews 10.14, For by one offering He has perfected for all time those who are sanctified. No burnt sacrifices, ceremonies, or Old Testament law-keeping are necessary now to atone for our sins. Under the New Covenant, Christ's sacrifice covers us in a permanent righteousness, perfecting us before God once and for all. Next, He equipped. It says in 2 Peter 1.3, his divine power has granted to us all things that pertain to life and godliness, through the knowledge of Him who called to us His own glory and excellence. Once saved, we no longer fend for ourselves. We know that us humans are very prone to falling into sin and temptation, so it, be, it would be hard for us to live holy life in this world by ourselves. Jesus graciously empowers us to live for Him through the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Knowledge of Him and His grace sanctifies and allows us to lead holy, full lives. Next, He blesses. It says in Ephesians 1.3, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. Not only does Christ grant us unbreakable joy, love, freedom, and peace on earth through His Spirit, but in saving us, Jesus guarantees us a heavenly inheritance that will never fade away. Next, He completes. It says in Colossians 2 verses 9-10, to for in Him all the fullness of deity dwells in bodily form, and in Him you have been made complete, and He is the head over all rule and authority. The dissatisfaction of our hearts and the emptiness that once ruled us can be of the past. We have been made whole through Christ's redemption. He restores us to be worshippers of God, as we were designed to be. Next, He provides. It says in Philippians 4.19, and my God will supply every need of yours according to His riches and glory in Christ Jesus. It also says in John 6.35, Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger, and whoever believes in me shall not thirst. In John 4 verses 13 to 14, it says, Jesus said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks of the water that I will give him will never be thirsty again. The water that I will give him will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. Through Jesus, we are now God's people, and He loves to provide for us to accomplish His perfect will and bring Himself rightful glory. As we pray and seek Him, He never fails to offer what we need in each moment. Lastly, He strengthens. It says in 2 Corinthians 12 verses 8-9, to Concerning this, I implored the Lord three times that it might leave me. And He has said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for power is perfected in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, I will rather boast about my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may dwell in me. We are weak, weak creatures, but Jesus never grows weary. We can lean upon His everlasting arms and call upon Him for strength, praising Him in the process. We can't and shouldn't depend on our own strength to get us through the challenges of this world and the temptations we face, nor can we depend on ourselves our intelligence, our good works, to make us holy, or save us, or bring us back into God's family. Rather, we should move our focus into letting Jesus Christ be more present in our lives, because His glory, His power, His love, His life, Christ Himself, is enough. Why is Jesus Christ enough? Because it is only in Jesus that we can find the fullness of grace and truth. It says in John 1.14, The Word became flesh and made His dwelling among us. We have seen His glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. It is also only in Jesus that we can find the grace that is sufficient for the great need that we have. 2 Corinthians 12 verses 9-10 to says, But He said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses, so that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. 
we find redemption from our lost state as well. Colossians 1.14 says, In whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. We also find forgiveness for all our sins and shortcomings. Ephesians 1.7 says, In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace. In Jesus, we also find the fullness of God. Colossians 1.19 says, For God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him. We find righteousness to stand before the holy God as well. 2 Corinthians 5.21 says, God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. We find peace with God the Father. Romans 5.1 says, Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God, through our Lord Jesus Christ. In Jesus, we also find eternal life, where we will find the fullness of joy and pleasure forevermore. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son, that whoever believes in Him shall not perish but have eternal life. We also find victory where we overcome. 1 John 5.4 says, For everyone born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that has overcome the world even our faith. In Jesus, we find a Savior willing to sacrifice everything for God's glory and our good. Romans 3.26 says, He did it to demonstrate His righteousness at the present time, so as to be just and the one who justifies those who have faith in Jesus. And lastly, we find adoption into the family of God. It says in Ephesians 1.5, He predestined us for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ in accordance with His pleasure and will. When you have all of this, what else do you really need? Anything else is icing on the cake. What do we mean when we say Christ is enough? When we say Christ is enough, we mean that Jesus is our supreme treasure. Knowing Jesus and being with Him is better than any life we could imagine or design for ourselves. Knowing Jesus is more pleasurable, more exciting, more satisfying, more meaningful, more purposeful, and more full than anything I have or hope to possess, because He alone is a treasure that will never fade. When we say Christ is enough, we mean that Jesus is our greatest joy. How is Jesus our joy? When the focus of our lives is on God's plan of salvation and Jesus Christ and His gospel, we can feel joy regardless of what is happening or not happening in our lives. Joy comes from and because of Him. He is the source of all joy. When we say Christ is enough, we mean that Jesus is the reward of the gospel. What is the reward of preaching the gospel? The crown of rejoicing is our reward to be given in heaven for proclaiming the gospel and we shall shine like stars, the brightness of which depends on the number of stars on each one's crown. Jesus will declare to us, Well done, my good and faithful servant. Jesus satisfies our deepest needs and longings. Because of God's selfless love for us, each of us can make this declaration of freedom. I am loved. Deep, unconditional love exists and I can have it. Selfless love rescues us from ideas that make us feel lonely and inadequate. It shows us we are loved and it awakens our love for others. When we say Christ is enough, we say we mean that Jesus is more than all we could ever need and want. God, who he is and what he does, will do and has done is immeasurable. We only see and know a slice of the whole pie in the sky, and we can know a lot about God. He is not afraid of our questions, frustrations, and promises. When we seek Him with all of our hearts, we will find Him. He is our all in all. Jesus is the source of your truest identity and greatest hope. We do not live by the expectation of people. As Christians, we live by the audience of one and this is God. Our true identity does not lie on how people see us or view about us, but our real identity is who we are in Christ and how God sees us. You have to keep in mind that if all else is lost, but we still have Jesus, we have everything. Jesus is the only hope for us. He knows how long we will live and sustains us during this mortal life. 
He is the foundation, the solid rock for which we can stand and find refuge in. His goodness ought to bring us comfort during times of trials and tribulations, and to find comfort, we must know how we can face death. What would happen if we lived a life apart from Christ's commandments? We'd still be spiritually dead, left to our sinful lifestyle apart from God. In response, we praise God in song and spread the news about Christ's death and resurrection to others, ready to meet Jesus as He throws death into the eternal hellfire. We will soon be with the Lord where there will be no more pain or suffering, implying no more sin. Death will have no hold over us as we proclaim Christ, He lives. Let us sing this song, Christ is our hope in life and death. Let us end this chapel time with a word of prayer. Lord God, we gave you thanks for you are good and your mercy is endless. 
Here we are remembering the sacrifices of Christ on the cross. May you cause us to value that deep love you had poured out on the cross for our salvation. We are sometimes distracted by the details of our lives, but we pray that you will turn our hearts to repentance and seek the one who answers when we call. I thank you, Lord, for shining our light upon us and for sending your Son, Jesus Christ, to us. Open our eyes that we may seek you and praise you with a pure heart. May we walk in your ways and obey your will in our lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.